Hello! I think we've lost the boat. You've been absolutely ages. Oh, it's so busy. Hello, Yale. That is the bubble. Everything makes it. Here, give me those bags. Stars, is there anything actually left in the shops? <laughs> no. Oh, not much. We practically bought the town up, didn't we, Lacey? Yeah, we went on a right old spree. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> Oh dear. Well, they'd better sit down in this nice comfy armchair and have a rest then. All right. Here, don't worry. That's right. But it's hungry. Uh, so is Lucy Lou. Can we have dinner, Shu? Well, I did make some lovely fresh salad with all Impy's favourite things. And some of that smoked cheese she likes, but there's none for that silly icky. Oh no! Then you really would not feed my friend. <laughs> yes, Icky will just have to starve. You'll see. He doesn't need any food. No. <laughs> it's no good cuddling me. I'm not interested. I'm really not. I've got enough to do here looking after Mummy and Daddy and, and everybody else without feeding that nuisance Icky. So you could just. No, 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 no. Get off me. Get off. Get off. Get off me. Come on. Get off. Get off me. Get off. Get off. I wish I didn't have to have that, but it's against the law for someone as small as me to sit in the back of a car without a booster. But luckily, Mummy found one without cartoon characters on or anything. I wouldn't have sat in that. Blech! You wouldn't like Alfie's car seat bag? It's wet like yours, but it's got two little bears on it. Bears? Oh, yuck. Rather him than me, but maybe he'll like it all right. And then we went to look at clothes for little Alfie, and we got some really, really cool things. Oh, good. I wonder if he's got anything nice. <laughs> it's all nice for Hutton, but Mummy's got this for the new ones to the out because you wouldn't like them. They won't got pictures on. Oh, no. Yuck. What did you do then? We went to see the another baby shop and we bought it out his uh, food bowls and spools and forks and his uh, drinking cups. And then we came home. You did get a lot done, didn't you, sweetie girl? Come on now, lay down. There's a good impy. It's getting late. Look, Mr. Moon's out full tonight. I've left your curtains a bit open so that he can peep in at you and the moon cat. Oh, hey, I'll lay down. Oh, oh. tonight. Bert. Bert? Yes, impy? I don't think I'm a very nice person. Oh, impy, what a thing to say. Of course you're a nice person. You're a lovely person. I'm not. I'm horrible. You're not? Why would you think such a thing? Because... Because I'm worried. I'm worried about what's going to happen when little Alfie comes. But I thought you were really excited about Alfie coming. I was, I was. Oh, I was really, really excited when I first heard about it, but, 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 but now he's getting so close. I... when there are new family members. Don't forget, I was one of 30, so I should know. 30? <laughs> I keep forgetting. 
Yes, I was always having to adjust to new brothers and sisters, so it's not just humans that go through this kind of feeling. Why, even the Spiggy Sparrow's children went through it. Oh. Oh, well, if you say so, Impy. Come on, then. Time for the song. Have you got a clean hanky? Yes, I have. Right here at the main show. Um, but, about these Spiggy Sparrows, um, I know they have five children because it says so in the poem, but ooh, were there any more than that? What did you mean about, uh, they went through it too? What did, what did you mean by that? Oh, you don't want to know about that, Impy. After all, they're only in a poem. Come on, I let's... Do want to know. I do I do I do I do I do want to know. Come on, tell, 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 me. All right, then, just because it's you. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Spiggy had five children. Trixie, Dixie, Pixie, Nixie and Wixie. They were all good, strong, healthy little birds, and they all ate like anything, so poor Mr. Spiggy was kept very busy finding food for them. What did they eat? It'd be stop interrupting me. They ate seeds and insects mostly, but because they lived in a village, they would eat things from gardens or grain from farms, anything they could find. Anyway, Mr. Spiggy was kept very busy finding food, and Mrs. Spiggy was kept even busier making insect pies and seedy cakes for her children. Oh. Soon, the five sparrow chicks were old enough to learn to fly, and Mr. Spiggy gave them their first lessons, from the edge of the nest to a nearby tree branch. Mrs. Spiggy was too scared to look, so she took the opportunity to give the nest a good clean and tidy while everyone was out of the way. <laughs> well, the lessons went okay, except for when Nixie, who always ate three times as much as anyone else, was nearly pulled out of the air by his own weight. His little wings could hardly take the strain, but even he got the hang of flying in the end. <laughs> oh, goodness, poor little Nixie! Soon it was time for the chicks to fly the nest, but they didn't go far. Sparrows live in family groups, Impy, so the Spiggy children, though they could all fly like pros and find food for themselves, made homes really close to their parents. They were always popping into the home nest for a slice of Mum's seedy cake and a chat, or to ask Dad's advice about something. Oh, I think Yes, it was. Well, one day, one of the children, Trixie it was, had been down to the farm to get some peas that were just ripe, and she thought she'd bring a few back for her mum and dad. So she flew back with a beak full of fresh green pea pods. But instead of being invited inside the nest, Mr. Spiggy stood on the edge, snatched the peas and stood there, all fluffed out like a feather duster, and he wouldn't let her in further. He just said Mrs. Spiggy couldn't see anyone that day. Oh, Nobody knew Impy. Trixie went and told the rest of the brood, and they all went in turn to see if they could find anything out. But they all got the same result, and the more they tried to see Mrs. Spiggy, the angrier Mr. Spiggy got. So, in the end, they just gave up. But they were very worried. Oh, oh my word! I would have been worried too, but I would have been very, very worried if I couldn't see my mummy when I wanted. That's right, Impy, so would I. Well, about ten days later, Wixie and Pixie happened to be enjoying a bird bath in someone's garden. They were sharing it with a couple of starlings who were gossiping and making a noise like they always do. Suddenly, Pixie said, Look, isn't that Dad? And indeed it was, Mr. Spiggy. He was flying along very slowly. And as they watched, he dropped out of the sky and fell into the bird bath with such a splash that the starlings were scared out of their wits. They flew up in the air like a pair of miniature helicopters and zoomed away in high dudgeon. Oh, goodness! What was the matter with Mr. Spiggy? That's just what Wixie and Pixie wanted to know. At first, Mr. Spiggy wouldn't say anything. He was too busy drinking water and washing himself all over. In the end, all he would say was, Come round the nest later, will you? And bring all the food you can. There's good kids. Then you'll see... <laughs> Wixie and Pixie got out of the bird bath and left Mr. Spiggy to finish his wallow in peace. And they flew off to tell the others as fast as they could. Then they all went to find the nicest food they could think of. Then there was such a mixing and a stirring, frying, boiling and a baking in five little nests as you wouldn't believe, as the five children cooked up the best delicacies they could think of for their parents. 
Finally, everything was ready, and they flew in a procession to the home nest. And what do you think was there, Impy? <laughs> right again, Impy. Mr. Spicky led his five grown-up children inside, and there were broken pieces of speckly white and brown eggshell. And there was Mrs. Spicky, looking tired out but very happy. And there were four tiny baby chicks with no feathers and only little bits of fuzz all over them. And what do you think? The minute they saw the food, they all opened great big beaks as wide as they could, and started wheezing and squeaking. Wee wee wee! <laughs> yes, and Dixie, Nixie, Pixie, and Wixie were delighted once they got over their surprise. They quickly came forward and started to help their mum feed the new baby birds. <laughs> Never impy. Trixie Sparrow wasn't happy. She stood staring at the new babies and at everyone fussing around them. She clutched her dish of deep-fried grasshoppers tight under her wing and didn't move an inch. That wasn't very nice. No, it wasn't. Mr. Spiggy noticed her. Oh, he said, is that grasshopper I smell? Them's good for babies. Hand them over, Trixie girl. And he put his wing out to take them, but Trixie knocked it away. I don't like wheezing little babies," she said haughtily. "Don't see why our mum wanted to have more anyway. Hasn't she got us? Look at them, nasty little things!" And with that, she swooped down and tried to peck one of the babies. Ah! Oh, goodness me! She did it. She did, Impy. But before she got anywhere near the babies, everyone flew at her and drove her away, grasshopper dish and all. It was a very sad thing. Because in acting so mean, she not only missed seeing her baby brothers and sisters grow up, learn how to fly, and become part of that lovely happy family group, but she lost her parents and her older brothers and sisters as well. They were so angry with her for being so jealous, and it took her a long time to make it up and be friends with everyone again. Oh dear! I wouldn't do anything like that to little Alfie, but I wouldn't. I really wouldn't. Not I know you wouldn't, sweetie girl. You see, it isn't what you feel that makes you a horrible person. We can't always help what we feel. It's what we choose to do about our feelings that really matters and makes us the person we are. And I know you'll be a wonderful sister to Alfie, as good as the four older speakies were to their baby brothers and sisters. You'll see. I won't make it to Alfie eat grasshoppers, Dad. <laughs> I should hope not, indeed. But Questions, questions, Impy. Yes, the new babies were fine. They grew up and they made nests close to home, just like their elder brothers and sisters. And I've already told you, Trixie made it up with the family, though it took a little time. I know a lot more about the Spickies, and I might tell you if you're good, but not tonight. Another day, then? Definitely. Come on, Princess. It's late. Time for the song. You start tonight. Hands together. Eyes closed. <sighs> One evening, as the sun went down and the candle fire was burning, down the road, the road came a pretty, a pretty maid, and, and she said, "I'm never turning. I'm going to a land that's far away, beside the crystal fountain." Where there's peace and joy for each girl and boy It's the big white candy mountain Oh, the birds and the bees and the lollipop trees The ice cold soda fountain Where the lemonade springs and the bluebird sings It's the big white candy mountain